What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on the channel. And today we're going to be reviewing round five, Port Adelaide versus the Dockers at the Adelaide Oval. And what was a pretty intensive game of footy. Uh, and Heartstopper at the end, winning by three points in front of, I think it was just over 35k. So uh, a big crowd, a loud crowd uh, to celebrate member recognition round. And boy, did we go through every single emotion we do as a uh, as a fan, and it was um, in the end a great win, and I'm very very happy and very very proud of the boys for the grittiness that they showed to get across the line, which in you know in 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 times at the end of the year that when you're playing in the biggest stages, if you have that bit of grit and that bit of uh, you know that grinding nature to get through the harder times and still come out with a win, it pays off massively. So this is one of the better wins for Port Adelaide in my opinion. Uh, and just one, yeah, I won't be watching back at all, but um, definitely one that you take on board and uh, yeah, you watch those final moments again because it was just absolutely superb. So let's get into it. Let's review round five. Boy, did we just play um, a game of footy that was just based around Frio's discipline and their defense. They were awesome. Um, and we noticed that again like last week against Carlton. We knew they were going to be a hard side. I think the, the skinniness of the Adelaide Oval, and it's, it's not that skinny, but I think the shape... Um, and the dimensions that uh, the Adelaide Oval is, it shapes really well for Frio's defensive plan. And, um, you know, they, they played it to perfection, I thought. Uh, they didn't quite um, hurt us on the scoreboard, I think, as they would have uh, liked, but they haven't, haven't really been that type of side. So um, for them to come through and you know, push us to the test, I think, is a really positive sign for Port Adelaide. Um, you know, and, and full credit to Fremantle. I think they're, they're well disciplined, well coached, and. You know, their, their star players, Brayshaw, Sarong, uh, their captain, Pierce, is just, you know, they stand up in moments and they didn't get the job done uh, from a Frio's perspective, but I think they've got to take a lot of pride and a lot of confidence in the fact that they've, in, in my humble opinion, I think they've taken it to one of the uh, better teams of the comp in us in Port Adelaide and obviously last week against Carlton as well. So uh, I do tip my hat a little bit to Frio there. In terms of how we played, well, we just played exactly how Frio wanted us to play uh, for them. So... For us to come through and get a, get a gritty win, we didn't have much effect. We did play a pretty dumb brand of football, I thought, at times, by bombing it inside 50 and playing it to their structure and not lowering the eyes. And the game sort of opened up late uh, enough for us to sort of um, break through that and, and actually hit some targets so that it were lead-ups or you know lowering the eyes or going deep inside 50 and actually having a one-on-one -on -one contest and not having a five-on-six or something where, you know, Luke Ryan or Alex Pierce could could dominate or, and their you know, the half backs and their wingers could have able, able to run out the footy and they did it quite easily, I think, going inside fifty defensively for us. We were not composed enough. Um I thought we were playing a little bit loose at stages as well and uh, weren't as tight and didn't really respect their forward line as much. And I think that showed in the second quarter when Freo got a run on I think it was three or four goals in a row and you know, that's something you don't really want. I think if, if a team like Freo that are scoring quite heavily against you in, in a patch, then you've got to restructure. And um, I think in, in that aspect, you know, we, we were able to nullify their effect on the scoreboard, but still we weren't able to impact ours in any way. So that was very, very, uh, I wouldn't say disappointing, but it's nice to be challenged, I think, because you get challenged uh, offensively quite often. You look at the game against Melbourne and... Um, you know, it was it was a game of football that you just you think oh well if you score more you win but in this game you're sort of trying to keep your team to a minimum score and um, you know they they did it really well for you and I think you know to be challenged defensively is something that's a lot more prolific in, in the way that we play footy and uh, if we can break that and we did and we got the win we got the four points we put us in the top two and and it just you know creates such a bigger picture for us now going into the next month so uh, full credit to the boys and um you know i think uh yeah it was just a good game to win i think in, in the circumstances a couple of individual performances obviously the the game breakers rosie butters and jason horn francis you know i love the fact that we can be challenged in the midfield but in the biggest stages in the biggest times of the game that they all stand up you know we look at the final play to get us the winning goal and you know, Butters gets the clearance out. Rosie gets the topo from Darcy Burn jones but he quick kick, quick kick inside 50 that was smart enough to hit a one-on-one -on -one contest. And Horn Francis read the ball beautifully and took the mark, took his time, kicked the goal. He's just an outright star, and he's just 
got ice in his veins and not ice in his bath, but he doesn't need ice in a bath when he's got ice in his veins. He's cool, calm, and collected, and it was just really, really impressive to see. And you know, I think as well, I look, I really like the game from Jace Burgoyne. Really love the game from Miles Bergman. You know, that intercept um, player that is up the ground, but he's intercepting. You know, the transition of, of Frio, or you know, he's getting that contest, getting to the contest where. Um, you know, they're banging it out of the our forward 50 and we're able to intercept and put it back in. You know, it's just moments like that that, um, you know, the younger kids stood up and I think Wines' game was really good too. He was a contested beast and, and he's tackling pressure. I thought our small forwards didn't do as much damage as we'd like and, you know, Rioli, Rioli kicked a goal and that was, um, you know, much needed in the third quarter. Darcy Burn jones looked a bit off. Um, McEntee got subbed and, and you know Mead came on, didn't have a big impact. So it was reliant on our midfielders and our tall forwards to impact the scoreboard. Dixon kicked two and he took two marks for the night and they both ended up in two goals, you know, one in the second quarter and one that was beautifully taken in the last quarter there uh, over the top of the pack. And, you know, people criticised Dixon in a fair way and, you know, he deserves that criticism because... You know, his set shots haven't been great. His goal kicking hasn't been great. He's taking the marks. He's been really, really impressive. And when Dixon stands up in a moment like that and he kicks the goal, being challenged by Kenny Hinckley, you know, to me that shows the fire in the belly still there for him. And he's not just playing one more year. He's playing for something. And and I think a lot of people criticise his mentality with with um, you know combination of his football life and his personal life. You know, with his cars and everything. And um, for me, I, I've always seen that heart and soul. He's always been the barometer, uh, and people look up to him. The kids look up to him. So, um, I'm full credit to Charlie for standing up in a moment and putting us in a position to win a game. And you know, I, I think in the end, the one thing I would take though from it all is the last two minutes. Whilst we were very, very good at um, nullifying any sort of entry inside fifty for Frio or them having an impact. There were still stages that we just didn't lack composure. We lacked composure, sorry, in those final moments. Rioli kicked it out on the fall. Darcy Burn Jones kicked it out on the fall. Sarong had a shot from a contest. You know, they, they just, it's those little things that you still have in the back of your mind. You're just sitting there and go, yeah, but if that happened, if this happened, we were composed enough and we did enough to keep them at bay. But, you know, it's just those game simulations of practice and, I think whilst we won the game, I don't think we executed it perfectly and having those plans in place. I probably need to be looked at a little bit or tweaked. Um, but then again, you know, it was just, um, it was a gutty win. I'm really, really impressed by that. Um, and just to show that grit, show that grind after having a, a night where just nothing was clicking. Anyway, poor fans, thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to next week, a big game against Collingwood. Um, I'm very much keen to see how we go. That's the big test for us. But I'm glad we got this win. We're now four and one, and we're um, you know sitting nice in the uh, in the top four at this stage. So hopefully it continues on. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way. My name's Anthony, and as always, come there.